Video editing can be fun or a complete nightmare. So which software to pick? And I'm gonna show you in this video that the right question is when to pick each one of them. Let's compare the features between CapCut and Premiere Pro so that you can start a project and finish it without hitting your head on the wall. Most editing softwares are gonna look similar at first sight. You're gonna have the media bin, a preview panel, sometimes two, and the timeline. And you're gonna find the most access tools here on Premiere and here on CapCut. But you'll never get to actually press any of these because you're gonna be using keyboard shortcuts. These are the way to go. And if you don't wanna go too crazy, you can actually ask CapCut, for example, to imitate DaVinci or Premiere shortcuts. And what I would highly recommend you is that you get a mouse that actually has extra buttons that you can customize to be able to use these shortcuts directly from there. It's gonna make everything much faster. Both CapCut and Premiere are gonna offer some predefined layouts. On CapCut, you're gonna find them on this button up here, in which you're gonna be able to choose from horizontal or vertical editing. While on Premiere, you can kinda resize the panels and move them wherever you want. So you can kinda drop in the corner here to attach it to the side or here on the top, you choose. But if you're not too picky, there are the predefined workspaces up here already that you can choose between editing, the color page or audio. So for example, let's say you put a clip on the timeline and a text box on top of it. And on both of them, you're gonna find two ways of doing it. One is the precise way where you're gonna see the coordinates and you can just type in or just slide it around to find exactly what you want. So that the text box is exactly where you want it with the perfect size. If you prefer doing it visually, you can do it directly on the preview panel. You're gonna be able to move it around, you can set rulers and you can make it snap so that you're sure that it's in position, in center or on the sides or whatever you want. Especially useful for social media editing, where you're gonna have a safe area where to avoid all those buttons and descriptions on screen. If you ask me which one is faster to just start editing, I'm gonna tell you that CapCut launches a little bit faster than Premiere Pro, but it's really a matter of seconds. And since we mentioned it, let's talk a little bit about media management. And here, both softwares are really gonna split your workflow. If you have a project that is a little bit more complex with many cameras, many sources, different frame rates, maybe an external microphone, Premiere is gonna be much easier to handle them and organize these files. You can color code stuff, you can use the metadata search. CapCut is gonna be very simple and show you a preview of the clips on the bin. To access something, you have to go inside each folder and then come back. In Premiere, if you just group some clips together and make a nested clip, this is going to pop in the media bin and now you can reuse it somewhere else, even on another timeline. CapCut also allows you to do similar thing doing compound clips, but they're not going to be in the bin. So if you want to reuse it, you have to copy and paste. Multiple layers is usually one of the weakest points in any kind of mobile editing app. And CapCut is actually one of the few ones that actually handles it a little bit better. And they improve it immensely when bringing it to desktop. Now, to say the experience is flawless would be a little bit exaggerated. Scrolling around is gonna be a little bit laggy, and in this case, Premiere handles it a little bit better. Also, when you're trimming clips and cutting things around, you're gonna see that things don't actually move together so well. On CapCut, you're gonna have to select the clips you want, then cut and reposition whatever else you need to move. While on Premiere and some other softwares, you have repo deleting, which is just deleting something and make everything else reposition by itself to the right spot. So here I'm thinking talking head video with two cameras, external microphone. It's still perfectly possible to do it on CapCut, but you're gonna have a harder time than doing it in Premiere. One of the differences that I mentioned before was this dual preview panel. On Premiere, whenever you select a clip from the bin, it's gonna show you in the preview panel. And you're also gonna have the preview panel that is showing you what's on the timeline right now. So you can just scrub around with the mouse and choose the right in and out points and just pull it to the timeline. CapCut is very simple and directly to the point. While you move the handles here on the bin, you're already gonna see at which point of the clip you are on the preview. You do it for the in, and for the out, you throw it on the timeline and now you're seeing the timeline preview. And here, if you wanna be really precise, you can still use the arrows right and left, I and O to be in and out points on the keyboard. So basically, short videos won't matter too much. If you have hundreds, like a wedding video, for example, then Premiere is gonna make it a little bit easier for you. Even more if you get used to the shortcuts and just like skip clip, in, out, timeline. Now, if you're already getting ahead of yourself and thinking, not only I have to choose, but also I still need to learn all of these softwares, I got you. Because that's exactly where the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare, comes into play. You're into video editing, and that's exactly what I teach on Skillshare. My class on CapCut for desktop just reached 10,000 students. And it's where I show you how to edit clean, punchy social media videos using the full potential of the app, way beyond the basics. But the best thing on Skillshare is that you're not learning alone. You're gonna be joining a creative community of members and learning from real successful entrepreneurs 
artists, designers, filmmakers, illustrators actually do this every single day. If you use the link in the description, you're gonna get a 30 day free trial on the platform, which is way more than the normal seven days they give directly on the website to watch all of the classes you'd like. And in all of them, you're gonna have access to the teacher, the community forum, and the concept is that in every class, there's a project. So you have to put to the test what you've just learned, which makes it much easier to make it stick. So thank you so much Skillshare for being such a cool partner. And let's go back to CapCut versus Premiere. Link in the description. Editing tools and timeline features. Here, both are gonna be very similar with you being able to scrub through the timeline in real time or in an accelerated form. It's what can be called as JKL editing, because these are the shortcuts to make it faster backwards, or just faster forward. And on CapCut, you can also set a live scrubbing of the timeline just by using the mouse. Also on both of them, you're gonna be able to set markers on the timeline and on the clips themselves. And this is super useful if you wanna position something precisely, because then other clips and media can just snap to this point. For example, if there's a place in the song with a very good beat and you wanna make a transition in that place, you can set a marker and then snap two clips together in that point. Deleting backwards, deleting forward, selecting, trimming, everything is kind of similar. One big difference is that CapCut uses this magnetic first track in which you can never have a black spot. Whenever you delete something, it's gonna grab whatever is in front of it and collapse it so that you always have a video in the main track. But on the other tracks, it's completely free. You can just position things wherever you want. And Premiere adopts this everywhere. You can just position your media anywhere you want and it's up to you to be sure that you won't have any kind of black frames in the middle. Okay, so what about doing some animated media? You get all of the basic controls on both of them. But it's very incredible how Premiere didn't develop the way it's done for many years already. So the principle is the same. You set up keyframes where you want the variables to be like that. So position, scale, rotation, it's all locked. Then you move forward in time and you set another keyframe and different values. And you don't have to worry about the in-between. The software is gonna figure out by itself what's in the middle. Now, the moment you want to tweak it a little bit and make it a little bit more fluid, you're gonna have to access the curves. And on Premiere, there are these tiny things over here so difficult to handle. CapCut got much better and visually intuitive to doing these things. It's easier to do it manually, plus it has a lot of pre-made options for you to choose from. It just makes the viewer feel like a much more professional animation. Bonus, there are some extra features here that you might find useful. Auto reframe is when you have a horizontal video that needs to be turned into vertical. So now if you don't reframe it, the subject is gonna be off screen. Both softwares can do it for you automatically and they both work really well. Split scene is a feature in which both softwares can get a clip that is ready and recognize every change of scene and make a cut there. For example, you started editing this video in Premiere and you wanna throw it on CapCut just to put transitions. You recognize the different scenes here and just add the transitions in the middle. And just to make your life a little bit more difficult when choosing between these two, CapCut has one more interesting feature here. It's got an AI assistant that identifies pauses, repeated words, filler words, and makes it super easy to cut the fluff and make it super fast paced. But wait a second, because Premiere also got two very exclusive tools, the Remix tool and the Generative Extend tool. One lets you extend or shorten a song to exactly the length you want. And I'm not talking about cutting, it's going to remix the song to make it match. And Generative Extend is going to extend a video beyond what you shot. Here, for example, I cut a clip in half and asked it to extend so that I could compare the original version and the extended version. It's incredible. Visual creativity and effects. And this one is gonna start a sequence of features that are gonna make you prefer CapCut over Premiere. And there's not even a discussion about it. If you need nice templates, animations, effects, on Premiere, the usual route is downloading assets from different websites. But we gotta love how CapCut just incorporates everything in the software. Templates for animations, transitions, and more are all ready to use, drag and drop. And they're so good, it's not like old movie transitions. Now, okay, there are cases in which Premiere is gonna be better. You need to create custom motion graphics, sometimes even hiring someone external for it, or you just wanna pick something fancy from one of the infinite options online, like Envato or Motion Array. The stock ones are terrible, but if you're willing to pay for a separate service like this, you're gonna have an infinite amount of options. But now with this, we must enter one conversation in which sometimes Premiere is not going to be enough to edit these motion graphics. It can definitely do some basic things, but most of the coolest motion graphics are gonna be made with After Effects. It's a completely separate app and it's amazing, but there's a cost to it. 
But if you just need something simple to do, of course cases in which the subject is not very clear, far away or not well illuminated are going to be a bit more difficult. But with the newest update, you just need to brush over a subject, it's going to recognize it and track it all over the clip. Masking with Premiere is definitely possible. You have the pen tool and you can just click around the subject and have it tracked. But you're going to have to do it frame by frame. And the same thing is valid for many other AI tools that are so useful. Like the auto removal that just deletes the background even without using a green screen. Relight that helps you relight a scene in post-production. And you're going to see that there are many other options over here in CapCut's panel, but a lot of them I don't consider that useful. Text and graphics. Inserting elements on top of your videos is going to be very easy on both softwares, but as you can see the trend here, CapCut is going to have many more text templates than Premiere. And with very nice effects such as glow, background and many others. Premiere kind of keeps the same approach in which you have to do everything manually or download extra plugins for whatever you want to do. And that brings us to the captions. Both are quite efficient and fast when creating them. And later you can customize one by one by selecting on the timeline on Premiere and then changing whatever you want. And the same on CapCut by selecting and unticking these apply to all boxes. I have to say that I've had many small bugs with captions in CapCut in the past. Sometimes you need to adjust something and it breaks the caption or it just goes beyond the borders. But the good thing is that it does the transcription so well that it's very rare you have to change something. Premiere does a great job also and it's very good to be able to use the transcription to find something along the timeline. But it stops here because then you can create the captions from the transcription but there aren't very cool templates to animate it, like these customizable ones on CapCut. Single word with glow and an animation, we got it. And you can save them as a preset and reuse it whenever you want to make a video. So I guess you understand the trend here, fast-paced, effects, captions. CapCut is made for short form content. Color correction. One more thing you can consider doing in Premiere instead of on CapCut is color correction and color grading. Now don't get me wrong because both of them are going to be able to assist you in getting a very good color graded image. Even with log footage. On recent Premiere updates it even detects automatically which kind of camera and profile it was shot and converts it automatically to normal colors which would be the Rec. 709 standard. So you don't even have to go through LUTs or anything like that. CapCut, all you need to do is select the correct LUT for your camera and that's it. The basic adjustments are going to be there and then you can go from that point. Premiere is going to offer a little bit more control, but HSL panels, curves and normal exposure things like contracts, exposure, brightness, these are all going to be available on both. Regarding scopes, the graph that shows you the data about the colors and the image, in Premiere, it's just so much easier to see what you're doing. In CapCut, it just feels like they put it there to check the box, but you can't really see much with these. So if you get a match, different types of cameras, or you want to give a little bit more of a custom look to your video, I would recommend using Premiere for that and then going to CapCut if necessary. Let's talk audio. You might be thinking that you're in this to edit video, but audio is just as important. On Premiere, you're always going to have video and audio separate, but connected between them. So you can see both of them big and clear. CapCut, you can make the track bigger or you can click these dots here and choose the track height. The waveform is always in the same place as the video and it can be a little bit bigger or just occupy all of the frame. On CapCut, we got right above the timeline some tools like enhance voice, reduce noise and normalize loudness. I tested it with many different clips and in some of them it did a very good job. In other ones, not that much. On Premiere, you have these sliders over here to be able to control how much of the effect you want so that you can improve it without making the voice sound too weird. You have the equalizer and some other effects, but if you want to go a little bit deeper, it's just like with the animations. You're going to have to jump to the separate and dedicated software from Adobe, which in this case is Audition. Fading in and out are controlled by these handles on the edges of the clip. Super easy to do on both of them. Now a quick note about the in-app libraries of sound effects and music. In Premiere, you're gonna have so many options that are coming from Adobe Stock, so you're gonna have to license them to be able to use it. But in the filters, you can find the free checkbox. This way you can see only the things that you don't need to pay for extra. On CapCut also, there are infinite options, but if you use a Pro Audio, then you're gonna have to pay for the pro subscription to be able to export this video. Export and performance. Some people say that Premiere have many more options than CapCut, but in reality, if all you need is ProRes videos or H.264, MOV or MP4 files, and be able to choose the bitrate of the export, you get it on both. On Premiere, these options here of presets like Behance or YouTube, they just make things faster. But the biggest advantage is that instead of keeping the software busy, you can just go adding videos to the media encoder. They enter this queue and let's say you finished editing 10 different videos. You can just leave the computer exporting all of them in a sequence 
and go do something else in the meantime. While on CapCut, you're gonna have to open the project, export, open the other, and so on. Now, if we discuss rendering times, CapCut edges the unbelievable. It's really incredibly fast when exporting, which makes some people even doubt how much it is compressing these files. So this is the exact same project. Can you see any difference? And here you have the length of the video and how long it took me to export in each of the softwares. What about collaborating on project? On Premiere, you can export an archive of the project and send it to someone else. With CapCut instead, you can upload your project to the cloud and send this link to someone else. And one thing's for sure, if budget is your absolute priority at this moment, CapCut Free is gonna be more than enough for so many tests and there's not even thinking about it. But it seems like that there's no version without watermark anymore. So if that's an issue, now you're bound to make a choice here. Premiere is going to require you to make a subscription. You can get just Premiere, but if you want also After Effects, for example, it's already cheaper to get the whole package. Or there's a hefty discount if you're a student. I'm not gonna go through the precise price because it might change depending when you're watching this video. Just check on the Creative Cloud webpage. I'm gonna link it here. CapCut Pro is currently $12 a month or $200 a year which doesn't make too much sense. But roughly, it's gonna be cheaper than Premiere. Okay, so in the end, which one should you use? And that is going to depend entirely on what you're going to create. If you're editing dynamic, fast-paced, short-form content, that's where CapCut shines. Now, if you're crafting a long YouTube video or a client job with multiple cameras, maybe polishing a project with pro audio or detailed graphics, in that case, Premiere might be the better choice. Besides being more of a standard in these cases, so that it's going to be easier if you need to pass this project to someone else. But this shouldn't be a battle in which one wins and the other loses. The smart creator knows when to choose the right tool for the job. And if this video helped you see things a little bit more clearly, then tell me if you're team Premiere or team CapCut in the comment section below. Or if you're completely on another team, let me know also so that we can do more comparison videos like this. And if you're pumped and you want to dive in immediately, go check out this video, which is my full beginner's guide to CapCut. And I promise you, in 30 minutes, you're going to be flying with it already. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you over there. Ciao, ciao!